What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and this is a Modern Nation. Today we're going to be modifying a Synology NAS server. Why do you ask? I don't know. Why does everybody keep asking me that? So last week I posted up some archival footage from Comic-Con 2016. You could watch that video by clicking on the annotation or the card in the upper right hand corner. I was going through my archival footage and I realized that I'm running out of storage really quickly. At the time of the making of this video, I have about 10, about 10 YouTube videos out. That's about 351 gigabytes of hard drive space. 128 gigabytes of that alone is just the Steam Link video footage. And that's only in 1080p recording. Imagine if I were recording in 4K like other popular YouTubers. Yeah, I just called myself popular. Back when I was doing the overclocking video, I was getting a lot of blue screens of death. It made me think that all of those unexpected crashes are probably not good for hard drives especially not good for archival footage that's gonna be there a while. Let's look at some of the common ways that hard drives die. The first being heat, power surges, physical damage, and human error. So I knew from the beginning that I wanted to have my data in what's called a RAID, or a redundant array of inexpensive disks, or independent disks, depending on which acronym you subscribe to. I wanted to make sure that my data had a copy in case one of those hard drives died. But I also wanted to make sure that those hard drives were separate from my computer, and they could be directly connected to my battery backup. So that was a lot of background on why we're here today. But I picked up this Synology NAS server and uh, we're gonna see what we can do with this thing. The Synology DS214 Plus is a network attached storage device that I picked up on eBay for about $150 used. If you do some shopping around, you'll discover that network attached storage devices are quite expensive. $150 is not bad for a Synology NAS that's less than four years old. For those of you that rate storage specs like you do PC specs, here's the rundown on this little device. It has a dual core processor, one gigabyte of RAM, it runs RAID 0 and 1. If you don't know what those are, you should be doing a YouTube search right now. It has two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0, eSATA, and dual LAN with both failover and link aggregation. Of course, this party is BYOS. That's bring your own storage. It doesn't come with hard drives, so I'm putting in two HGST two terabyte drives for a total of two terabytes total storage because I'll be running these drives in RAID 1. Once your device is plugged in and powered on, navigate to find.synology.com in your web browser and it should automatically detect your NAS server if everything is connected properly. Once you set up Disk Station Manager, your interface should look a lot like this, complete with a system health and resource monitor in the bottom right corner. From the control panel, we're going to navigate to hardware and power and under the general tab, you'll see there's a fan speed mode. And there's three modes to choose from, full speed, cool mode, and quiet mode. We're gonna be choosing full speed mode because we want performance. We don't give a sh how loud it gets. And under the storage manager, we'll find our hard disk drive status, which provides some useful information about the drives themselves, including the bad sector count and the temperature of the individual drives. Now the Synology community forum is full of great hardware mods, which makes my heart happy. One of the most common mods that I see on here is changing the fan in the back for a high performance one. So that's what I'm gonna do today. The Noctua NFA9 92mm PWM fan is a high performance, ultra quiet fan. Even down to the packaging, you can see this is high quality. It comes with integrated anti-vibration pads and a six year manufacturer warranty but I still don't care for the poopy colors. Let's do a rundown on the numbers of these two competitors. The stock fan is a Yen Sun, you can read that number there. It utilizes a Synthetico fluid dynamic bearing, runs at 36.3 CFM, that's cubic feet per minute of air, at 23 decibels. Our replacement fan is a Noctua NFA9 using an SSO2 hydrodynamic bearing, which is practically the same thing. 46.4 CFM at 22.8 decibels. You'll notice these two fans are comparable in sound levels at about 23 decibels and RPM range between 1900 and 
2000. Uh, but what you will notice is that the Noctua has about 10 CFM more, which should indicate that it pushes more air. And pushing more air should indicate lower temperatures or so I hope. In order to get this fan installed, we're gonna to need to take the back off of this Synology storage device. There are a couple screws, one here, and then there are two screws on the bottom we need to remove. With those screws out, we can take the back off, and you can see now where the fan is connected to the fan header on the circuit board. It's actually a respectable fan, and that's what makes me sad, because it's not 120 millimeters, and I can't find another use for it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws for our fan to replace it with the Noctua. This is what your fans look like when you live in the desert. Uh, Brand new Noctua fan. If I can get it out of the packaging. I'm just going to enjoy this moment before I put this fan into this box, which is going to be under my desk and never seen again. There's going to be lots of video of me putting screws into things, so you better get used to it now. And like every good magician, you want to show the audience that the fan is in fact still there. And in case you thought there'd be a problem putting a four pin PWM fan onto a three pin fan header, well, you're wrong. Simply install it the way that you would install a three pin fan header, and you'll notice that there's one pin hanging over. This is for signal and won't be necessary. It's important to pay attention to the orientation of your fan. You want to pull hot air out, not pull cold air in. Notice this diagram here. Yes, I reversed the orientation, but for illustration only. I'm not a dummy. Before installing the Noctua fan, I recorded some idle temperatures using DSM. You'll notice that the idle temperatures are about 29 to 30 degrees, which is about normal running temperature for me. I performed a file transfer of about 13 gigabytes in order to see if I could increase the temperature. Unfortunately, the temperatures remain mostly constant at about 31 to 32 degrees. All right, now it's time to see what these Noctua fans can really do. So uh, once again, I took some idle temperature measurements. Okay, so idle temperatures are about 31 degrees, which is about the same as stock. That's all right. We'll see what the performance is when we do file transfer. One degree difference? Are you kidding me? I spent hours doing research online looking for the perfect fan. I wasted $17 on a premium f***ing fan that performs no differently from stock. Arrgh, performance mod fail. I have two explanations as to why we didn't see a temperature difference. First explanation is that the temperature sensors are not accurate. Also, they're not running in real time. I would need a better program to be able to analyze the temperatures. I haven't been able to find one yet. Or I can simply try sticking a temperature probe inside and hope that that works. The second more likely explanation has to do with the way that Synology manages temperatures. After doing some research online, I was instructed to navigate to a file called scemd.xml. I had to SSH into the file using PuTTY. What I discovered was a configuration file for fan speed based upon temperature. The program can ramp up or slow down temperatures based upon the fan profile you selected and based upon what the temperature is currently. This is similar to the way that graphics cards and modern day motherboards can ramp up or slow down fan speeds based upon temperature. My guess is the Noctua fan is actually running running slower because it's pushing more air and hence reducing the temperature down. The stock fan is probably in the same temperature range as the Noctua fan. However, because the RPM and decibel rating of both fans is so close, you're probably not going to even notice an audible difference, much less a performance difference. So after looking at the results of my test, I concluded that there was really no temperature change whatsoever. Really, the only reason you'd want to replace a fan is if the fan were broken in the first place. I don't foresee any performance improvements by getting a higher performing fan. So I was disappointed by the results of this otherwise boring video and I decided that maybe what this video needs is to be a little bit more colorful. I found this electroluminescent panel on eBay for about $10 and decided that I was going to illuminate the inside of the mask by shining light through the perforations in the letters. I conducted a test by taping the light panel to the inside of the shroud and turning out all the lights. And it looks freaking amazing. First thing we're going to do is take the back panel off again by removing those familiar screws. Oh, that worked for nothing. Ah. 
I'm okay. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the shroud and the hard drives that are inside. Two bottom screws and two top clips release the front. If you've never seen the inside of a NAS box, you can now check that one off your list. This video clip isn't sped up. This is actually me working in real time. This is how fast I work when I'm on three cups of coffee and a Red Bull. So we're removing the top and bottom sliding drawers for the hard drive. Last, we're removing the SATA connectors and the motherboard itself. So here's the main board itself. I'm not gonna spend the time identifying anything. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. My first objective was to cut the L panel to size. Yep, you can cut these panels just about anywhere. They're that special. Because I'm running AC current through these, I don't want to electrocute myself, so I'm taping off one of the exposed ends. We're gonna tape the panel down with electrical tape. See, we're looking blue already. I'm blued up. Sorry. We need 12 volts to power our L panel, so we're gonna tap the power source. Just making sure we have the correct terminals. I'd hate to reverse the orientation of this. I'm soldering down the leads to my L panel to the terminals themselves. You might wanna secure these with hot glue, but for testing purposes, I just left them as is. I mounted the inverter to the inside of the chassis using double-sided tape. I was careful to make sure that it didn't interfere with any of the other parts inside of the chassis. I'm gonna mount this slide switch that I bought at this self phone store to the back of my unit. I drilled two holes into the back and then mounted the switch with hot glue. The switch will allow me to turn off the unit at night when I'm sleeping. You'll see why this is important later. In the last part, we solder all of the wires together, put the unit back together, and turn it back on. I think the glow effect looks awesome, but there is one downside to it. Yeah, that's really annoying. Still working on that. In the meantime, at least I installed an off switch. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give me a like and share it with somebody that you think will enjoy it as well. Your likes and shares help my channel grow tremendously. Let me know in the comments section if you've ever changed a fan. Did you notice a temperature difference? And if you did, how big of a difference was it? I'm curious to see if my testing protocol was correct. Join the nation by clicking on that subscribe button. And when you do, make sure you click the bell icon inside. That way it'll notify you the moment that I release new YouTube videos. I'm putting out new videos every week, so keep coming back for more. And if you have any other questions or comments or you just want to say hi, hello, guten tag, good day, mate, or what's going on, eh? You can reach me at any of the social medias. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.